Hello guys, this is Navin Reddy. In this video, we'll see, we'll solve this problem here. Now this is the pattern here. Now uh, if your question is why we should solve all this pattern while uh, learning Java is, when you talk about Java, so you, any programming language in that matter, so if you talk about uh, C programming or Java, so we have two things. One is the syntax and second is the logic. So while you learn all the syntax, so you remember only syntax, right? So where you struggle is the logic. So to increase your logic, you can you can solve these patterns. So this is not the ultimate step, but this is the beginning you can uh, start with. Uh, this is the beginning for you. So let's start with the pattern. So this you have this pattern here. Uh, so if you focus on this pattern, so we have a uh, one here, a uh, zero one, and then one zero one, then zero one zero one, and this goes on. So basically, it's a pattern where you have number of rows and number of columns. So if you say this, so this is your uh, num this is your first row here. Is, this is your first row, first column element. Second row, first column element, and then second row, second column element. Now, before printing this, what we can do is we can just print stars. So before going to this zero and one, we'll print stars. So we'll print one star here. So instead of all this number, we'll try to print star. So once you complete that task, and then we'll try to convert this into one and zero. For that, let me go, go back to my NetBeans. So in NetBeans, to do this, whenever you have to print a pattern something in that way, let me draw that pattern here also just to make it more effective. Okay. So we'll say star. Okay. So we'll draw this those pattern here. So we'll say it is one. We have zero and one. And we have one, zero, one. We have zero, one, zero, one. And lastly, we have one zero one zero and one. So this is the pattern here, right? Now, before this, let's print all the stars. So in order to print star, your task should be: we have to print rows and we have to print in columns. So to to count the number of rows, to count the number of columns, we require some uh, what do you say a counter. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll say int i comma int j. So this will be your counter. Just So this i and j will become our counter. Okay. Now, so once you count this, uh, once you got this counter, we'll use a for loop. Whenever you try to print a for loop, you have to use so the outer for loop. So this for loop is responsible to count the number of rows, and the inner for loop, which we'll be using there, will be for number of columns. So we we'll start this for loop by one, and we'll end it at five. So since we have five rows. We have to start with one and we'll finish at uh, five. Now this is the outer loop which is responsible to count the number of rows. Now what we'll do is we'll use an inner loop which is responsible to count the number of columns. So we'll say j equal to one, j less than equal to five, and j plus plus. Now see, if you start with i and end at five, it means you will be printing number of columns as five, or number of rows as five. So this is here. Which will which we will be using as to count the number of rows, and this loop will be for columns. But if you use this one, which is one to five, it will print a box structure because we will be printing five columns every time. Okay, so if I if I print here, so we'll say, let's say s out in double quotes. If I print star, that's what we want to print now. And if I use this, so it will print star. But let me just run this. So how to run? So shift F6. Okay, it will take some time. Okay. So if you run this, you can see everything is on the same line. It's because we are using something called as a print. So whenever you want to print on new line, so what I want, after printing the first first row, it should uh, come to new line. So after this loop, what we can do is we can simply say so tab just to get a new line here. And now if you run this, it will, you can see it's a box structure. Now why we are getting this box structure is simply because we are, we are printing the number of columns as five. What I want is for the first row, it should print only one element. For the second row, it should print only two elements. So for that, we'll finish it at i. So if your i value is one, that is your first row, 
it will print only one column. If the second row, it will print the number of columns as two. And now if you run this, and that's your output, right? So this is what we want. But hold on, not stars. We want numbers, right? We want something in this format. So for this, what we can do is, see for sure, this is your first row, first column. So if I add one and one, so first row, first column, one and one plus one is two. Okay, so whenever you have two, it is one. So for this, your, num your row number is two, your column number is one, right? So it becomes two plus one is three. Okay, odd number, so odd number is zero. What about this? This is two plus two, which is four. Four number is one, which is even number is one. So if you, if you find a logic here, so whenever you add these row number and column number, if it is even number, you should print one. If it is odd number, you should print zero, right? That's the logic. So what we can do is before printing this, we'll say if i plus j, okay, so if this addition mod 2 is equal to equal to 0, that's an even number, you need to print 1, okay. In else, we'll print the same thing, but it will, I will be printing here 0, okay. So if you have a... Uh, even number it will print one, odd number will print zero. Simple. And now if we run this, that's the pattern we wanted, right? So that's the answer. Cool. So this is how we need to print this pattern here. Okay, this which, which is this pattern. So that's it from this video. We'll see the next pattern in the next subsequent tutorial. So thanks for watching and do subscribe for further videos.